Hello, hello. Nasty day in the crypto markets, obviously. Um, so I think the biggest question a lot of us are thinking is where is the bottom? Right now we're looking at ETH right here. Here's the main chart. Have a lot of lines drawn, obviously. Ever since April 4th, you know, when we hit up here around 35, 30, almost 3,600, this is Ethereum we're looking at. Bitcoin would be the same. It's been going down. I pay more attention to Ethereum, even though they move together because I'm more interested in accumulating Ethereum for the long term than Bitcoin, although Bitcoin is the second thing that I accumulate. Hit the like, hit the follow. Let's dive into this thing here. So here's the move that we're staring at right here, right? We were up here on May 4th, the day the Fed came out and said, hey, we are raising interest rates 0.5%, which is what we expected. And they also said the next couple of times we meet, June and July, we're going to raise another 0.5% and see what to do from there, uh, which is also really what we expected. Uh, so the market pumped up a bit that day. And then the next day, actually overnight, it's been going just down, down, down. Why? Why? Because... And if, and if you were following me last week, I was telling you that I sold all my alts, all my altcoins, other than Ethereum, but I don't consider Ethereum an altcoin. So I still have my Bitcoin and Ethereum, but I sold all my other alts because I realized here's what's going on. Look at the macro landscape. Be with me on this. You need to hear this, really. Not financial advice, just my opinion. Here's what, in my opinion, people need to hear. Look at what's going on globally, right? We have oil prices super high. Do you understand that the price of oil, gas, affects literally everything because of production cost, transportation cost, energy, right? That's what we're really thinking about. And so that affects it. We're also having these big supply chain issues. Look at China. China is on a lockdown. And so their ports are not exporting. They're not porting porting stuff and it's just way 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 backed up and since you're on lockdown things aren't even actually being manufactured and most of the manufacturing in the world happens over in Asia especially China okay so we also have the Fed raising interest rates well why does that matter in case you don't know let me drink some coffee why why is that why does that matter because that means it costs more to borrow money. And if you're not familiar with how our current financial system works, well, like when you go get a mortgage for a house, when you go apply for a loan at a bank and stuff like that, and, and, and you, they approve you and they give you money at whatever interest rate, that money, do you know where that comes from? Well, it comes from other money people deposited in the bank. No, not really. I mean, some of it. But most of it comes from brand new, fresh printed money that the Fed printed for them because the bank when they approve you for a loan the bank they go to the fed and they say hey fed we would like a loan and the fed says okay and they literally make brand new money out of thin air and they give the bank an interest rate which is what we're talking about when we talk about the fed raising interest rates and the bank goes to you the, the lender the person getting a mortgage and increases the interest rate so the bank got the money brand new freshly printed from the fed right at whatever interest rate and then they come to you with that money and they give it to you at a higher interest rate and they make what's in between so that's how that happens but as they raise interest rates well when I, if I, am i going to go up the, the five hundred thousand dollar house I, I bought last year right say i bought one um at the interest rate i got last year it's much higher today so my payment today compared to last year hell even the beginning of this year is probably about 30 percent higher so that $500,000 house that I could buy last year and afford the monthly payment, this year I probably can't afford it. And by me, I mean most, by many people. I right? so like, okay, well, I wanna get a house, so apparently I gotta lower the price range uh, that I'm buying in. So this is one big example. So that, in car loans too, your, your monthly payment is gonna be higher on everything if you're getting new loans from this point. Right? And so that lowers demand for new money. So what that does is that slows the printing press of the Fed printing new money. So that lowers incoming supply. Are you with me so far? We're just getting started. Hit the like, hit the follow. Next thing. The Fed is also selling securities. What does that mean? So for the past couple of years, for many years actually, but the past couple of years in particular because of the pandemic, afraid to say the word because of the cancel culture we live in um 
they've been buying, buying, they buy treasury bonds, they buy mortgage backed assets, they buy, 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 and that all and that allows them to send brand new, freshly printed money into the economy and the global markets. But as they sell their securities, they're selling because now they're selling treasury bonds, they're selling mortgage backed assets, they're selling their securities, and they're sucking the Fed is sucking money out of out of the markets, the economy. So the Fed has done two things. They are slowing, they are lowering demand for new money, and they are sucking money out of the markets and the economy. What's that gonna do? Where does that money come from? In particular, when they suck money out. The first place it comes from is risk on assets, speculative assets, stuff like that, and crypto is at the top of that list. So one of the first things people are gonna sell is crypto, along with stocks along with other equities. So that's what's going on here. So we expect higher interest rates. We expect this to last for a while. We expect the economy to take a hit. It's been taking a hit. We expect all kinds of things. Um, and that's why things are going down because clearly to me, we are in a bear market. If you've been following me, I officially announced uh, last week that I sold all my alts. Granted, I sold them for the ape Land, for the ape land, other side land sale, uh, but then when I didn't, when I had but I didn't get any land. <laughs> Good job, Board of Yacht Club, Basie. Um, even though I was trying to pay two thousand dollars gas fee, two thousand dollars transaction fees just to do the dang thing, in, in addition to buying the actual land anyway, still didn't get it. Um, so I, but then I was, so I was just sitting there with cash, well stable well stable coins because I immediately sold my ape when I didn't get the land. Because I knew that was the ape was going to go down, duh. It was so pumped up because of the land sale. So I turned it into stablecoin. I thought, all right, what do I want to do with this? I didn't want to buy back my alts, is what I realized, because of the greater economic factors, global market factors going on. And so I did buy back. Uh, I did. I am DCAing into Bitcoin and Ethereum because I think these prices are fantastic, and I'm very positive those are going to be around for a very long time and go up much, much higher than they are now and certainly higher than they've ever been in a reasonable amount of time. But everything else, I'm like, I'm just going to let my stable coin sit and earn, earn 18 to 35% interest and just get interest on my cash because we're moving into a time that it seems cash is actually valuable because asset prices are going down so the buying power of cash is going up. And so I'm just kind of, so that's why I'm buying Bitcoin and Ethereum but I'm just letting my cash grow on the side too as I wait to get in here because I think we are going to go lower. And I was saying that last week. So I hope some of you heard me. I didn't expect this big of a drop this fast. But nonetheless, this was always on the table and we can go much lower. I expect us to go significantly lower, right? We're at, what are we at on Ethereum here right now? We're at about 2300. I'm actually in a short currently on Ethereum, so that's worked out pretty well so far. I did take a long, but I got stopped out on it um, a couple days ago. Um, oh wait, no, I made a little bit of profit on that actually. I think I, I did get stopped out, but in profit, so I made a little bit on the long back up around here, this little green blip. Um, but I've been in a short since about mm, 25 or so. So that's worked out pretty well, and I think we could go lower. This Look at this big, look, look at this. Let's go to the uh, 30 minute. Look at, look at this drop here. We went from 2,400 down to 2,250 in a matter of like 30 minutes. So it's like we're dropping, 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 dropping fast, drop, drop. It's just, the, it's, it's getting more curved over. Do you see that? Like that was a, you know, that was quite a drop here on May 5th. You know, it went down from 29 and a quarter to about 20, she's a little under 27, that's quite a drop. And kind of traded sideways, dropped a little bit more, traded kind of sideways, dropped more, traded sideways, dropped more, and it's still just kind of dropping from this about 25.60 down to about 22.50. So I think things are gonna go lower, not to panic, right? If you panic, you're gonna make bad decisions. If you believe in crypto long-term, if there are cryptos, projects that you believe in long-term, this is a good time to be getting in, in my opinion. Bitcoin and Ethereum to me are the sa as safe as it comes. And so that's all that I'm buying right now, but I'm not backing up the truck yet either because I do think we're gonna go lower. I'm really watching everything over the next six to 12 months. We will really know more as the Fed has its next couple meetings in June, around the middle of June and around the end of July. 
that will be interesting because from now till say the end of July is going to be very telling because the Fed could turn the money printers back on and if they do that if they turn the money printers back on then you can expect equities crypto stocks to go up in my opinion and based on historical data but in my opinion um, so that's where we're kind of at today not not if you're if you're full on like oh I need it to go up type thing yeah this is not a good day it's not a good it's not a great day I, I like it when things are up when they're going higher and higher and higher but you know I make a lot of money when the price goes down too how do I do that click the link in the description and I'll take you to this page take my free masterclass how I get Bitcoin Ethereum for free when the price goes down pretty valuable to know especially in times like this right um, so check that out very very interesting maybe we'll look at Bitcoin real 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 quick real 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 quick well yeah why isn't this guy looking at Bitcoin already because I'm more focused on Ethereum uh, but it follows Bitcoin still but with that being said the biggest thing to pay attention to one of the biggest in my opinion is pay attention to when the Ethereum triple having happens the Ethereum merge whenever that happens I think that's going to cause us to go into a bull market granted global economic market factors are going to matter but it's just hard to see something like that not kick us into a bull market as a matter of fact when that happens it may be the end of this bear market but maybe before then I don't know that's why we watch day to day uh, but right now Bitcoin is at who sub 31 looks like 30,850 Wow are we hitting a bottom here well that's kind of what I thought here right we have to golden pocket yeah, and it went up uh, and then broke it now it's came down here held it for a second and now it's down here and I don't see any strong support lines if we zoom out let's go to the daily real quick see look at this wick all the way down here follow it over you can see it lines up pretty well with these two guys right here but it's even gone a little bit lower than them so our next strong support zone is probably about right here at, you know, we'll call it about 30,000, but maybe about 29.5. And then our last respite is right here at about 28.8. And that may, be the, that may be the bottom, but it could go lower. That would be crazy, but it could go lower. I could definitely see it going down to, boy, I could see it going down to like, hmm, right there's an interesting spot, 19.9. I got, you know, right here's a strong zone around you know, 22.5, 23.5, 22, well, probably about 22 to 24 right here. You can see this kind of zone right here where it got caught up. But um, I'm just DCAing because I know long term, it's important to remember, here's the lifetime chart of Bitcoin. These times of massive drop happen, but overall it just goes up. I don't expect that I didn't see any reason why this would change. We are just in one of these times, and the best times to buy always are in these red times, and we are red. We've been red for one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth month we've been red on now. How long was this one? One, two, three, four, and a couple green. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. About about a year and a half. That's that's that seems about right. Usually, I mean, this one was shorter. How long was this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. About twelve months for us to hit the bottom there on that one. All right. So that was about. March 2019, probably that's eh, a little more than 12 months because we started going down back here for sure. Um, so it took you know a little over a year, and we've been going down now since November. So you know we could have six to 12 months left of a bear market. We could come lower, and in reality, is uh, to me, I'm just embracing it. All right, we're going lower. We're in a bear market. So me, I'm like, just go down as lower and lower and lower and lower because the lower it goes, the more opportunity I see long term this blue line in case you're wondering see what happens after these blue lines boom price goes up boom boom and then there's this line right here why does he have one drawn in the future because these are Bitcoin having events when the amount of Bitcoin that can be mined per day gets cut in half that's a, obviously has a big effect it's just basic supply demand dynamics right now we mine 900 Bitcoin a day back here it was 1800 
3,600, 7,200. After this line, it'll be 450, and this should happen somewhere around March 2024. So, um, so I would expect in about eh, about three years from now, we should probably be at another all-time high, somewhere around there. And gap, this gap right here is this is where the wealth is made, right? Here's wealth was made, wealth was made, wealth was made because of the run-ups. And we know there's probably going to, plus I'd imagine the global economy is probably going to be better in two years, right? I, I just, I feel like that's a fair bet. Hit the like, hit the follow. Hope you found this useful. We'll be going live at uh, noon Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Friday, most days Monday through Friday. I'm a one-man operation, so sometimes I got to do other stuff, but almost always here on YouTube and on TikTok, Daily Crypto Bull across all the, show, all the socials. Hit that, check out that link in the description too for your must-have crypto resources. Stay classy. You're awesome.